Sacagawea was born around 1786 into the Limhi Shoshone tribe in what is today the state of Idaho. Her father was a Shoshone chief and her people were known as the Snake People. They mostly settled in the Rocky Mountains, but food was generally scarcer in the rugged terrain. They mostly ate berries, roots, and occasionally elk, deer, or other wild game. The lack of food often led them to the plains in search of more game, including the buffalo. However, this was dangerous for them as they did not have access to guns as weapons and other enemy tribes on the plains could attack them. Warring tribes on the plains eventually forced them back into the mountains where they struggled for food. On one such hunting trip, Minatari Indians, a tribe of the Hadatsa, attacked Sacagawea's tribe at the Three Forks of the Missouri River. As the women and children ran for the safety of the mountains, the Minatari tracked them down. As she tried to cross the river for safety, an enemy rider scooped down and captured Sacagawea up by her arms. They took her captive along with her friend Otter Woman. The two girls watched as the enemy burned their village. Sacagawea's father died in the attack and her mother reportedly died later from mourning Sacagawea and her father. Sacagawea's two brothers and a sister survived the attack. The Minotauri took Sacagawea and Otter Woman to North Dakota, where they lived in a, in a Hidatsa Mandan village with their captor Red Arrow and his women in his lodge. Sacagawea was around 10 to 12 years old at the time. Now slaves, the two girls primarily worked the village cornfield, but also tended the gardens, tanned buffalo leather, and helped with whatever tasks they were told to do. Life was actually good for them because the Minotauri people were not cruel, but treated them well. Among the Mandan, they learned Mandan customs and language. When Sacagawea was around 15 years old, a French fur trader and trapper by the name of Toussaint Charbonneau won her and Otter Woman in a gambling game against Red Arrow. Charbonneau already had a Minotauri wife, and when he took the girls home, they worked alongside his wife, taking care of the chores. That wife was kind and gentle to them, and because she was older, they took over much of her care and chores. She soon died, and Charbonneau, known for being a mean, task-driving husband, claimed Sacagawea and Otter Woman as his wife. In the fall of 1804, the Corps of Discovery, led by Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, arrived in Mandan Territory in what is now North Dakota on their ex expedition to explore the Louisiana Purchase. When Charbonneau heard their expedition would continue westward, he offered his services as a translator. Lewis and Clark agreed to hire him. Sacagawea was pregnant that winter as Charbonneau moved into Lewis and Clark's camp. Yet because she could translate both Mandan and Shoshone, and as a young mother with an infant child, she signaled to any along the way that they came in peace. Sacagawea was able to travel with the team. Charbonneau also knew that she was familiar with the territory through which they would be traveling. In February of 1805, Sacagawea gave birth to a son, Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau. As winter broke two months later, the Corps of Discovery set out again, this time with Sacagawea, Charbonneau, and their son. As they followed the Missouri River, they faced many hardships in that wild territory, such as plagues of mosquitoes, risk of rattlesnakes, the weather and change of seasons, as well as facing hunger when food became scarce. During this time, Sacagawea proved valuable to the team, as she was able to restore food sources by digging up roots and collecting edible berries and plants. Her knowledge of the territory was an asset, even though she was not able to guide the explorers directly because she was a female, as well as a Native American slave of a white man. Sacagawea's mild disposition and calm nature enabled her to handle many of the hardships they faced. On one occasion, when a terrible storm came upon them, one of their boats nearly capsized and began to take on water. While the men panicked and struggled to keep the boat under control, Sacagawea calmly worked to salvage the cargo on board while her infant son was strapped to her back. When the Corps arrived in Sacagawea's native land, she was surprised to find her brother there alive, and now as the chief of her tribe. Their warm reunion led the way for open trading between the Corps and the Shoshone, and enabled the Corps to acquire the horses they needed to continue their journey. 
The Shoshone gave the explorers guidance to navigate across the mountains as well. Although this was her native people, Charbonneau owned her, so Zacajawea continued westward with the expedition. The group eventually arrived at the Pacific Ocean, which astounded Sacagawea at the greatness of the water there. She was able to see the skeleton of a whale, which astonished her further. Even though Sacagawea was familiar with much of the territory they had traveled through, she had never been this far west. In 1806, when they turned around to come back to North Dakota, Sacagawea again proved to be an asset to the expedition, as she was able to share some direction by that point. She remembered many of the childhood trails and was able to identify important landmarks. Upon returning to the Mandan village in 1806, Charbonneau decided to leave the expedition because he wanted to stay in the territory. For his services to the Corps of Discovery, Charbonneau was paid $500.33. Sacagawea, however, no matter the asset she was, did not get paid because of her status as a Native American woman owned by a white man. Despite the sadness that followed Sacagawea upon her village attack, family death, her captivity, and then acquisition by another man through gambling, she remained a good-natured woman. There is not much information about Sacagawea after the expedition ended. There is evidence that at one time she traveled with Charbonneau to St. Louis where they stayed for some time with William Clark, but later moved to present-day South Dakota. In 1812, Sacagawea gave birth to a daughter, Lisette. A few months later, she died due to a fever which is noted in a diary of the trader John C. Leddig in December of 1812. However, this is controversial, as Shoshone oral history argues that she died in 1884 among her Shoshone people. It is also recorded that after Sacagawea's death, William Clark adopted both Jean-Baptiste and Lisette to secure education for them.